Uh, so I think it is recording. Um, I'm just going to stop the share uh, for a moment to um, to see to check and see if it's recording. Yes, it is. So I'll go back to screen share. So yes, just to finish um, my thought, uh, I find it so helpful to turn the mind and heart uh, to the Buddha as the embodiment of all that uh, that I aspire to, that is good, uh, the embodiment of, of all the beautiful qualities that, um, that it's my aspiration to manifest in my life. Uh, always something that I have to begin again and again and again. Uh, I think we all know that um, we, we forget, we get caught up in habits and we can always uh, turn our attention again toward the Buddha, toward awakening. Uh, that, that Buddha is not just something outside ourselves as a, a figure uh, of history, who awakened and and shared the Dharma? That Buddha is uh, that aliveness and that awakeness within our own being. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa. Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Pudang Saranang Gachami Damang Sarnang Gachami Sangang Sarnang Gachami Dutiampi Budang Sarnang Gachami Dutiampi Damang Sarnang Gachami Dutiampi Sangam Sarananga Chami Tatiampi Budang Sarananga Gachami Tatiampi Damang Sarananga Chami Tatiampi Sangam Sarananga Chami And taking five precepts, these commitments to non-harming in how we live and how we speak, how we act, how we, how we think um, are such an important foundation. Uh, it's so true that when, when we harm others, we harm ourselves. When we harm ourselves, we cause harm to others as well. And, uh, and the practice of this really um, brings this home again and again, how interconnected we are. So please uh, join or, or read the English or just listen, uh, whatever is most supportive to you. Anati pata veramani sikapadam samadhyami. Adina dana veramani sikapadam samadhyami. Kamala 
Kame su mi chachara veramani sikapadam samadhyami. Musa wada veramani sikapadam samadhyami. Sora Maria Maga Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sika Padam Samadhyami Idam Misila Maga Fala Nyanasat Pachaya Hotu Sadhu 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 Anumodami. And each of these uh, precepts also have within it, uh, implied within it, um, and these are, uh, and, and, and this is opened up in so many ways in the Buddhist discourses, the positive iteration of these. So, so when refraining from destroying living beings, you know, how do I support life? Uh, in, in refraining from taking that which is not freely given, how, how do I live in a spirit of generosity and giving um, what I can? And uh, refraining from sexual misconduct, you know, what is the sexual energy that is part of me and uh and i think you know it, it's it's something that changes as we live and as we age and um and just that the sexuality that we experience in our youth is not the same uh that we experience when our hair you know becomes gray and our bodies age and yet there is this sense of eros this sense of this connection, this energetic connection to the life around us. And how can we cultivate that in skillful ways to bring that energy of eros to appreciating life, to, to living with a sense of wonder and delight in the beauty uh, around us. And, um, and refraining from false speech. Uh, you know, how, how can we learn to courageously speak the truth that needs to be said, um, needs to be said in our relationships, needs to be said in our communities, uh, to skillfully and courageously say what is true. And, um, and refraining from taking intoxicants which cause heedlessness uh, so uh, that also is uh, has a, its positive um, its positive uh, side of how do we how can we cultivate clarity? Uh, how can we notice in more and more subtle ways when we're turning towards substances to escape um, rather than um, learning to be with. And at the same time, uh, you know, uh, addictions are, are very harmful, but uh, it's, it's, it's uh, something that we need to navigate skillfully because sometimes um, when, we're, when we're really suffering or in pain, um, you know, uh, we shouldn't deny ourselves uh, some dark chocolate, <laughs> if that is what will help in the moment. <laughs> um, but also to know that it's, uh, it's, it's not the answer. It's just a moment of, of uh, sensual pleasure, which sometimes uh, that's okay. So, and then, uh, you know, this, uh, this, this sentence, uh, may this training and peaceful conduct help to bring about knowledge of the path. I love that phrase, knowledge of the path, because um, we get to know the path. We go back and 
over and over and over the same thing, the same, the same kinds of, uh, you know, pitfalls and um, habits. And yet, when we are paying attention, we, we gain a knowledge of the path of, of how we, how we fall into the pit, how we can escape and how we can learn to avoid those pitfalls. Um, and uh, yeah, and steer clear of, of suffering. So knowledge of the path, I think it just, it just that, the beauty of that phrase really touches me and the fruits of liberation, the fruits of liberation are those beautiful qualities of heart, mind and, and action that um, bring joy to ourselves and others. And that phrase at the end, I rejoice, I rejoice. These, these practices bring rejoicing. So, yeah. I've been, um, In practicing uh, in in these weeks of healing, I've been practicing uh, love metta uh, as a um, it's and, and before also it's just become such a, a key practice for me uh, love and and it's and it's uh, iteration or its expression of com as compassion in the face of um, pain and suffering. Um, and its expression as, uh, uh, as mudita, joy, in the face of, um, of thriving, of uh, seeing the, our own thriving and the thriving of others. So, um, so I'm going to uh, reflect on that a little bit and, and bring that into our practice today. Um, I'd like to, I don't think I have read in fullness the, um, this short chapter of the Satipatthana on uh, contemplation of mind or contemplation of mental states, um, of citta, Uh, and so uh, I believe this is the uh, translation by Nanam Siku Nanamali. Um, doesn't say. Uh, yeah, I believe it is. So he says, uh, contemplation of mind. And how bhikkhus does a bhikkhu abide contemplating mind as mind? Here, a bhikkhu understands mind affected by lust as mind affected by lust and mind unaffected by lust as mind unaffected by lust. He understands mind affected by hate as mind affected by hate and mind unaffected by hate as mind unaffected by hate. He understands mind affected by delusion as mind affected by delusion and mind unaffected by delusion as mind unaffected by delusion. So I'm just going to pause there for a just a comment. How neutral the language is there uh, about understanding that quality of mind. It's not that, you know, he understands that we're so bad to have mind affected by lust or, or hate or delusion. It's just seeing it. It's so, it's so neutral. It's so light. It's so open. And on the other hand, we also see, we notice, and, and this is a big thing that, that really needs to be cultivated. 
when is the mind unaffected by greed or lust or or hatred or or anger or delusion or confusion or all those different names for those states when is the mind open clear receptive at peace to really be mindful of that to take that in is so important equally important as noticing when the mind is affected by these states and is so that we can understand the suffering of these states and not get pulled into feeding them and acting upon them and creating more suffering in that way. So, so both of those are seeing both sides. He understands or one understands, let's not, we don't have to be gendered. One understands contracted mind as contracted mind and distracted mind as distracted mind. One understands exalted mind as exalted mind and unexalted mind as unexalted mind. One understands surpassed mind as surpassed minds mind and unsurpassed mind as unsurpassed mind. One understands concentrated mind as concentrated mind and unconcentrated mind as unconcentrated mind. One understands liberated mind as liberated mind and unliberated mind as unliberated mind. So there are different teachings on what those various words means words mean. Um, perhaps uh, some of them land with you uh, in terms of connecting with the experience, like when the mind gets very contracted, um, that, you know, it's kind of fixed on a particular thing, fixated. Uh, and, you know, there's a saying, we become as small as the fixation of our mind, you know, we can we can just shrink down to this uh, obsession that we may have. Um, and, uh, and to see that in the moment, how when the mind becomes contracted, uh, whether that's with fear, with, with anger, with, uh, with grasping something, I need this, I must have that, jealousy, these list of mind states are not exhaustive. They're examples of different mind states, but they're, uh, they're not exhaustive. Many teachers have said that. So, um, so just knowing what the mind is doing, what, when it's doing, when it's doing it. And just, um, you know, as, as Krishnamurti says, just the seeing is the doing. The seeing is the doing. The seeing is just that moment of just slight letting go when we can see it with mindfulness, which is free of grasping uh, or pushing away. Just just uh, having that having that courage and openness and curiosity. To, uh, to be present with, even, even if it's painful, because when we, sometimes when we turn our minds towards a state of suffering, uh, we feel it in the body. And, um, and that's actually such a support to, that the body can uh, hold the suffering of the mind. Because when we hold it in the mind as a story, as a concept, as a something about me or mine, uh, then we will continue feeding it and continue on a narration in past and future. But when we 
let go and simply turn our attention toward it and let it abide in the body. The body is such a beautiful ally and support that it will hold that, uh, that suffering. Uh, we feel it in the heart, maybe in the throat, in the, in the jaw, in the belly, wherever, it, in, the, in the arms, wherever, wherever it may reside. And, and then we can also be present as it, as it moves. It begins, we begin to be able to see how uh, it shifts and moves and moves through. And this is what the Buddha goes on to say. Um, In this way, one abides contemplating mind as mind internally. So internally, like um, knowing it within or one abides contemplating mind as mind externally. You know, sometimes we can see uh, maybe someone we're close to or, or uh, someone even that we see outside in the world around us who is in a men particular mental state. Uh, or one abides contemplating mind as mind both internally and externally. And so, we can, we can contemplate that when we see it externally, we can, we can know, yes, I've, I've known that, I've known that anger, I've known that, that grasping, I've, I've known that jealousy, I've known that um, sense of, of hurt, or feeling not good enough, or feeling abandoned, all of those things that we share these, these experiences of, of our common humanity. And, and we can contemplate how these states, which sometimes cause us to feel so isolated, are actually shared. I see a little tail of a cat on Tina's <laughs> screen. That's so charming. Thank you for sharing your cat, Tina. <laughs> or else one abides contemplating in mind its nature of arising. Or one abides contemplating in mind its nature of vanishing. Or one abides contemplating in mind its nature of both arising and vanishing. And so this is such an important part uh, of, of the seeing. Uh, this is like the key primary message of the Satipatthana Sutta, to see that things arise and pass away. Um, and the Buddha said, this is such a key insight and so important uh, that it's, it's more important than any other practice we can do to recognize deeply, experientially, not just intellectually, that things arise and pass away, and that, and that, the, and that can become uh, a kind of refuge. That wisdom of knowing the arising and passing away can become a kind of refuge. Um, and and wisdom and equanimity develop from that insight, or else. Mindfulness that there is mind is simply established in one to the extent necessary for bare knowledge and mindfulness. So that's, um, that's that quality of, um, of the when the stability of attention to quality of awareness, uh, becomes established, that we are paying attention to awareness. And then at a certain point, we can look through awareness of an object to awareness itself. We can turn toward just attention, mindfulness of that quality of awareness and there's a stability that can be established there in which 
we're aware in a peripheral way of sensory experiences, mental experiences arising and passing away. And, um, and, uh, and we're not drawn, like the mind doesn't reach out to try to grasp them. The mind doesn't reach out to try to push them away. There's a stability of simply presence uh, and abiding in that presence. And many teachers talk about this, um, the na that nature of presence. And it's something that, that we can cultivate um, simply by bringing mindfulness to our experience moment by moment. And one abides independent, not clinging to anything in this world. That is how a bhikkhu or a meditator practitioner abides contemplating mind as mind. So, um, so in, um, When we, when we uh, were delving into the second Satipatthana uh, on Vedna, feeling tone, um, I remember talking about how we can experience uh, the non-worldly or non-sensory feeling tone, which is so nourishing to our practice. Um, by cultivating skillful mental states. And, you know, an example of those is the Brahma Viharas, Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka, uh, love or goodwill, kindness, um, compassion, joy, uh, joy in, in the goodness of our own being, joy in the goodness of others, um, and um, equanimity, mental balance, um, as the sense of, of uh, not being drawn, uh, not being set off balance by, by the uh, experiences that, that happen in the world. And um, and so um, I, I want to also return to these qualities of heart mind and, and there are many, there are many beautiful qualities. Um, the parami, the 10 parami uh, that, uh, you know, if you've been Coming to the Sunday Sangha, you've uh, you've shared uh, some reflections on those, um, uh, and uh, and and the Brahma Viharas, and, and there are many beautiful states of mind. So, so when we when we're aware, so in the Satipatthana, the Buddha is really saying. Be mindful, be aware of, um, of the qualities that are arising, of the, of the states of mind that are arising and, and manifesting and passing away. Uh, don't get caught up in them. Uh, observe them. Um, witness them with, uh, with a certain degree of neutrality, of equanimity. There is equanimity is is present in its seat form in every moment of mindfulness. Um, and and what, I, what I want to just reflect on a little bit and practice with you today is, is how by, by calling forth, by, by cultivating, you know, we don't just need to wait passively for mental states to assert themselves we can choose to cultivate 
beautiful states of mind that bring joy, that bring uh, well-being to ourselves and to others. Um, and, and so metta is, is uh, such an important one uh, and uh, so basic and, and, uh, and not something that we ever will uh, kind of go beyond <laughs> in our uh, practice. It's, it's always, always uh, important and nourishing. And I've been discouraged discovering in my own personal practice of, of metta uh, that, that it is um, not only something that is nourishing in the moment, but it also is healing for me uh, that, that those, those habits that so many of us have of self-judgment, of, of feeling not good enough, of feeling um, like somehow we're, we're, we're unworthy or, or lacking or you know, feeling shame for ourselves, you know, and, and it seems to be something that's so deeply embedded in our culture and uh, maybe in, in some of the religions that have, whether we were brought up in them or not, um, they seem to have permeated our culture and, um, and they're very destructive. Uh, and, and this, practice of metta just um, you know like it's not a question of whether we deserve metta or not there's uh, you know I uh, when I first was exposed to the practice of metta uh, my mind rejected it uh, and I said oh no no that's not for me uh, what I want is wisdom I want the wisdom you know, maybe when I become more wise and less confused, then then maybe I'll deserve metta. I, I didn't say it that way exactly, but I recognize in retrospect that was the attitude. And so, so it's not a matter of deserving uh, metta. Uh, it's none of us are deserving or undeserving um, of of metta. It's just something that is. Uh, part of the nourishment of life in the same way that we breathe the air and drink the water and, and eat the food that earth provides. Um, we are nourished, uh, our hearts are nourished by, by love. And um, I like to use the word love because it's, uh, it's my amour. Uh, if that resonates for you, use that word. Um, it is a, uh, it's something that we all need. Uh, it's, we need it from the moment that we emerge from the womb into the wide world. We need that amour, we need that love. And, um, and so, uh, and so we discover as we embark upon a spiritual path that we can give it to ourselves, that we can offer it. Uh, and and it, it, may, it may be something that's a little bit hard at first if you just started on this path of, of deeply loving this being, um, this one sitting on your chair, on your bench, uh, lying on your bed or wherever you may be reclining, um, this being uh, needs the nourishment of love that you have. Um, with all of our limitations, um, 
I was just li listening to some Leonard Cohen as I was doing my physio this morning and uh, the last song I heard was the anthem, uh, ring the bell that still can ring, forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything, that's where the light comes in. Such profound uh, wisdom and so forget your perfect offering. Uh, there's a crack in me, there's a crack in you, uh, many, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, you know, from that place of recognizing our limitations and, and maybe sometimes love can bring us to a place of needing to forgive ourselves for the ways that we have harmed ourselves or harmed others. And that, re that deserves our attention. And, you know, it deserves, whether it's a ritual or writing something down, if you feel that there's something when you think of loving yourself and you think, but I did this or I failed in that or how can I, I don't deserve, then that's what's calling for you to give attention to that and say, dear one, dear one, um, whatever unfolded at that time came from the causes and conditions of that time, of who you were, of what was around you, of the relationships you were in. And, and, and it's just a matter of Accepting that's how things were at that time. We can't go back and fix it. We can't go back and make it right. Um, we can sometimes ask for forgiveness. So if that's what's calling you as you turn, as you, as you call forth love for this being, then, then I, I encourage you to promise yourself that you'll give that attention um, in the near future. Uh, I've done, I've done so with many things that have come up in that way. And um, it's a very important thing. I'm very glad I did. <clears throat> so, uh, so, so I'm going to uh, guide us in a, a metta practice. So, so please take a moment, if you like, to uh, to shift your posture, to stretch, and to take a uh, posture which feels dignified, um, uh, supports awareness. So as you find your posture, <clears throat> bring awareness to the body, bring a, a kind and gentle, a loving awareness to the body, a compassionate awareness if the body feels pain, or if there's sluggishness, or the mind feels scattered, just be patient and kind.
Feel yourself supported by Mother Earth. Feel, your, feel yourself supported <clears throat> by our ancestors, the ancestors who lived on this land for millennia before our arrival, our spiritual ancestors, our genetic or blood ancestors, supported by the courage, the suffering, the ways that they learned and evolved. Bringing gratitude for this moment. Here we are in this place, in this time, together practicing practicing to wake up in our lives. And as you bring awareness to the body and feel the body in whatever position it is, awaken, I invite you to awaken a sense of gratitude that this body has this capacity to sit, to feel the breath, to open to sensation, to bring mindfulness to the different mind states. Gratitude for a single moment of practice. Gratitude for your decision to come and practice in community this morning. And as you feel this, this gratitude, this appreciation, which is a very close kin to metta, notice where you feel it in the body, notice the quality of This, uh, this beautiful mental state. Gratitude is so uh, accessible. It's a kind of a, a step that we can take into metta.
And just notice as you bring this quality, seek to awaken or call forth this quality of metta for this living being, this non-self that is alive. that you experience as your subjectivity. If you, if you find it's a stretch that there's this quality of metta doesn't energetically appear. And it can be a felt, it can be something that has a felt quality in the heart, it can be a quality of energy, it can be an intention. You can perhaps just bring a memory of yourself as a child or a moment that you recall in which you were in love, in love, abiding in love. It could be with a being, with a tree, with life itself moment of being in love, abiding in love. And something that I've shared with uh, you is a teaching from beautiful Sri Lankan teacher Bhante Wimala, um, who is the teacher of my dear friend David Chuela. And he told David to simply wrap his arms around himself and say, I love myself. I love my whole being. I love myself. I love my whole being. And just feel that hug, feel that intention, feel that aspiration to, to deeply love, accept, cherish this being that you are, not as any kind of personality or any kind of fixed self. No, that's not what we're talking about. But as this shimmering life, this stream of being that each one of us is not truly separate from one another, and yet there is an element of subjectivity in which we experience the world and life through this body-mind continuum. We interpret the unfolding world and our ways of interpreting and responding and reacting have been shaped by the world and sometimes shaped skillfully and sometimes shaped unskillfully. And we can bring love to all of it, bring love to all of it. We don't have to divide ourselves. We love it all. We accept it all.
with wisdom, we understand some of those habits bring us suffering, some of us bring us happiness, but that's not where we are right now. We're not in discernment, we're in acceptance, openness, love. So you might be simply using a word such as love, amour, metta. You might use a phrase such as I love myself fully. I love this whole being. You might use more traditional phrases such as May I be well, may I be safe, may I be filled with loving kindness, may I live with ease. your heart opens up to a quality of joy, allow that, let that expand, open up. If you feel a quality of luminosity in the body, that can also be very supportive and abide in that. If that luminosity, if that love or joy or compassion moves beyond the body, opens up into the space beyond the body, that also can be uh, just allowed, received, supported. And just at any moment, if the mind wanders, just come back, whether it's a quality of radiance in the body or, or a word or a, a quality of heart. abiding in metta, abiding in love,
if the mind speaks up and objects and says, no, I don't deserve, I'm not worthy, but what about, just love that too. Just bring love to that objecting mind, that mind that says no, love that too.
come home to love. Come home to abiding in love, being in love. Dwelling in love. Let love be a means to let go, let go of all the self judgment, let go of all the self talk. Accept the invitation to love. Let's take some minutes as the practice comes to an end. To intentionally allow that field of net of love, amour, kindness, benevolence, friendship, to allow that to extend beyond the body into the field of space and time in all directions. Noticing who is in that field what beings, beings that we know, beings that we don't know, human beings, four-legged, 
invisible beings. And extend this heart that wishes all well to all of those life forms. May each one be well. May each one have what they need for life. May each one be at peace. May each be happy. In dedicating our practice that this, this practice we've done together, as well as all of the myriad ways that we bring practice into our daily lives, mindful moments throughout the day, our sitting practice, our walking practice, our caring and service that we extend to others, all of the many ways that we share the Dharma, share the beauty of the Dharma in our lives. May it serve and support the happiness, well being, and liberation of all beings. Welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. thank you.